I've, I've been into Bitcoin mainly because of I, I understand the whole reason for it and the whole point of it is not so much an investment for me. So I actually ended up just converting all of my fiat into Bitcoin. And for a while, I just lived 100% on Bitcoin. So I am definitely all, all about you know, let's let's make Bitcoin work and make it happen all over the world. So, um, here in Panama, we've been working with Grant and Ocean Builders and uh, trying to build this these sea pods and get things working here in here in Panama to to at least get the first steps going of how do we live on the water. Um, I, I see it as at least for Bitcoin. Um, as far as the cruise ship goes, it's like a micro economy that we can try out all new different th different ways of spending your money or anything. Um, yeah, so the cruise ship thing came along. We're we're working on these the sea pods for ocean builders, and we kind of saw this as a a way for people to you know get off land and get off all these uh, uh, the old ways of living um, on land. You're you build a house and you're destroying nature. You build a road, you're destroying nature, but you put a floating home on the ocean and you're actually you know, you're encouraging life growth under your home. So um, my our idea is let's start getting people off of off the land and onto the ocean. So doing a quick uh, calculation based on our the rate of how fast we can build these floating homes it was like you know maybe in a year we can have 10 and you know so we we get 10 people <laughs> off land hey how are you all doing i have a very very special episode together with grand ramont josh lopez whom you probably know from my previous episode um and chad elvatovsky he's a really interesting guy a bitcoiner a very adventurous uh, story uh, we'll see whether we get into that you know about the platform that he had built together with his uh, partner Nadia on somewhere in the ocean of uh, near Thailand and then it was destroyed by the uh, Thai Navy or military because of uh, you know of uh, because of whatever national sovereignty issues or something like that. So we'll see if we get to that. But what we want to talk about is uh, is the Satoshi cruise ship, which uh, Jet Elvatovsky, together with um, other partners, I don't know specifically who, has bought, purchased, and beginning on November fifth, two thousand twenty, you can uh, buy or auction. A cabin a start i don't know what the starting prices are but i'm i heard i heard this you know very reasonable fair prices or pretty cheap prices so we'll see we'll go into all of these details and you know it's about um it's not about the ship or you know or whether it's a bitcoin uh denominated uh cruise ship but it's more like the model the concept the idea the vision behind it which, which really fascinating Maybe it's miniaturized model, you know, which which we can finally scale up, you know, for to free private cities, you know, uh, structural uh, transformation, uh, deflationary economics, bringing together, you know, people, entrepreneurs, investors, engineers, inventors, new technologies, and uh, you know, where we can show people for the first time how, you know, a society, a human civilization. Um, can function, can work in, in a Bitcoin rooted uh, structure, whether it be a ship or in a free private city or, you know, in a citadel city, whatever you will call it. So I know, you know, not everybody would love to do, you know, go on a, go on a ship. I'm not sure either, you know, I'd rather have my own peace and quiet somewhere and be more, you know, near the sea, near the water, but not on a ship. Like, but you know, there's like retired people, older people, families, children. So they, I, th I guess, they love uh, that kind of, of 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 style, of you know, of lifestyle and traveling, or not traveling, but like you know, living on a ship and uh, enjoying whatever the ocean view and you know, intermingling with one another. 
So yeah, without further ado, this is my talk with Chad Avotovsky, Grand Ramon and Josh Lopez. Let me know your question afterwards. My DMs is open. My email address is hello at the totalconnector.com. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, my, my podcast platform. That's my that's the heart blood of my work. So thank you so much and have fun. Hey, welcome to the Total Bitcoin Podcast Show. My name is Kevin Davani. I'm the host of the Total Connector Show and the Total Bitcoin Podcast Show. A uh, very special guest today. Uh, Two of them already have been on my show. That's Grant Ramon and Josh Lopez. And I have another special guest, and that is Chad Elvatorsky. Uh, thanks so much, gentlemen, for coming on my show. How are you guys doing? Different time zones. <laughs> Very good. Doing great. Thanks for having us on. Yeah. Another uh, beautiful day in Panama. Exactly. Yeah. My pleasure. So I already had some really fascinating talks with Josh and Grant about, you know, ocean builders, the sea pots. Uh, uh, what is really possible uh, and you know as because this is a, a Bitcoin podcast show I, I, I'm really interested because I'm I guess or I assume there's a lot of you know interest in free private cities in C pods or in in the uh, uh, crypto cruise ship or, uh, or Satoshi sh uh, cruise ship that uh, Chad has sort of initiated or founded uh, maybe you can tell a little bit of background story, Chad, because you are new here about about yourself and, uh, how, yeah, how did, how did you get to this project? Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, well, it goes, you know, my my Bitcoin background. I go back to uh, 2010. Um, I started getting into Bitcoin, so I think I bought my first one just as it. The bubble popped at $32 and it was crashing and so I bought in <laughs> but then it spent two years crashing down even further to two dollars so um, unfortunately I sold everything right as it was <laughs> coming back up because I spent two years of oh man what a bad what a bad choice I made but uh, from from there uh, and I, I uh, I've I've been into Bitcoin mainly because of I, I understand the whole reason for it and the whole point of it is not so much an investment for me. So I actually ended up just converting all of my fiat into Bitcoin, and for a while I just lived 100% on Bitcoin. So I am definitely all all about you know let's let's make Bitcoin work and make it happen all over the world. So. Um, here in Panama, we've been working with Grant and Ocean Builders and uh, trying to build this these sea pods and get things working here in here in Panama to to at least get the first steps going of how do we live on the water. Um, I, I see it as at least for Bitcoin, um, as far as the cruise ship goes, it's like a micro economy that we can try out all new different th different ways of spending your money or anything um yeah so the cruise ship thing came along we're we're working on these the sea pods for ocean builders and we kind of saw this as a a way for people to you know get off land and get off all these uh, uh the old ways of living um on land you're you build a house and you're destroying nature. You build a road, you're destroying nature, but you put a floating home on the ocean and you're actually you know, you're encouraging life growth under your home. So um, my our idea is let's start getting people off of off the land and onto the ocean. So doing a quick uh, calculation based on our the rate of how fast we can build these floating homes, it was like, you know, maybe in a year we can have 10. And, you know, so we, we get 10 people <laughs> off land and on living on the water, but uh, that that's not good enough for us. So we, we saw what was happening to the cruise industry. And like back in March, April, we started getting planning on, you know, you know if we had a cruise ship, then, you know, that's, thousand people that can be living on the water like right away in a lot cheaper way um the sea pods start at one hundred ninety five thousand dollars, which is is good for you know for a 
you know, replacing your home. But um, the, the actual cabins for on the cruise ship, we're figuring, you know, we could sell these things for like $25,000 and still, you know, still be, be viable. <laughs> you know, if, if the prices got down, it's what we were looking back way back then. Um, we weren't sure if the prices would come down enough, but um, so we started contacting the ship companies and as they were starting to sell these uh, ships or, you know, get rid of them, scrapping them. Because of the um, lockdown, because of coffee. We're like, Hey, we'll, mm -hmm. we'll, yeah, unfortunately all the cruise industries are just basically shut down. I mean, I, You know, I hate to take advantage of such a, a horrible thing. Uh, Carnival, I think they, they lost like $2 billion dollars in revenue uh, last quarter. So it was like, you know, but I mean, better than these things getting scrapped, um, just, you know, being wasted. Uh, let's turn it into something good. So hopefully at least something good comes out of such a, a horrible travesty. And uh, we'll, we figure we'll take the cruise ship and, um, Yeah, get some people used to used to actually living on the water um, at a you know fairly reasonable rate, so that there can be more people um, taking that first step with us and um, joining this new blue frontier and, and move forward with us. As far as the, the Bitcoin side of it, mm -hmm. um, well, obviously we're all um, Bitcoin enthusiasts. Um, actually, I sold the uh, sold Bitcoin in order to, to buy the ship. Um, I, I asked them if they'd accept Bitcoin, but unfortunately <laughs> they said, yeah, not quite. They would not be able to do that. But um, yeah, that's that's how I was able to to invest because um, I, I bought a lot early. And so that's how we, we move forward on this. Could you I'm talk glad you did. <laughs> what thanks for getting in early <laughs> <laughs> so could you talk yeah, a little yeah, bit about the details like uh, uh, do you have to redesign like the, the cabins what do you have to work on like who is interested who are the, the parties or you know the customers potentially interested what kind of people are there I mean are so also like individuals or just families or you know for whom is it more suited Um, right. Um, yeah, as far as details go, I first and most foremost have to, uh, you know, disclaimer that we are fully uh, cooperating with the Panamanian government. We're under a Panamanian flag in the territorial waters of Panama. So we will be complying with uh, all ethical Panamanian laws. Um, uh, one of the biggest questions we get are what are the fees? What are the monthly fee is going to be, and we are still working with the ship management company to determine um, exactly exactly the monthly cost of running a, a cruise ship. It's, it's not small. So we're running the numbers and making sure that, you know, I, I don't want to give a the fee and then, you know, we find out a couple months into it that we're, <laughs> we're way – way too low you don't want to lower the or you don't want to raise the rate after people are starting to move in that that's definitely not fair so um as far as the the details of who would who would want to live in um, i'm being surprised every day by the different people that are interested and mm -hmm. um yeah at first i i was we were just thinking let's let's get a bunch of uh crypto crypto nerds and let's make this a a cool cool hangout for, for Bitcoin holders. Um, and, and that's definitely what I want. I want, you know, different crypto companies come in with your ideas of, I mean, there's so many, I, I enjoy uh, using a library instead of YouTube for, for my videos or, uh, you know, you know, Bitcoin, I, I lived on Bitcoin in Germany. I'd say 95% um, of my, my transactions were, were in Bitcoin. So, and early on I wanted to, you know, if, if I actually wanted to promote Bitcoin and, you know, 
tell tell my friends that it's actually useful. Uh, I wanted to uh, try it myself. So, um, and Germany is actually harder to live on it than in the U.S. If, had I lived in the U.S., it would have been so much easier. People don't realize how easy it is to live on Bitcoin if you just you gotta you know put a little thought into it. But it's it's fairly easy. So, on the ship, we're going to be accepting Bitcoin for. Uh, all payments, um, not just Bitcoin. Um, you know, bring your bring your altcoin and give it a try. Uh, you just have to work it out with the the shop owners. But uh, yeah, definitely, we want to encourage its use. Uh, make it make it happen on the ship so that we can show the world in a, in this little microcosm um, how how an act- actual economy using Bitcoin can actually work and if it you know, if you have some new hardware, new new protocol or something like that you want to try out, um, bring it on. And, you know, it might be a little a little tricky for the first few people when uh, we're trying new stuff out. You know, I imagine, like, somebody reconfiguring the uh, juice dispenser and you're, you know, you're like in, you see in the movies, they're trying some new technology and now all the juice is, you know, spraying out at you, <laughs> like... So don't don't be too surprised by little hiccups in the technology, but I'm hoping there's a lot of uh, tech friendly people that understand that, you know, this is like an incubator for new technology. So imagine walking down the halls of an MIT engineering um, building and you got like little robots walking across or, you know, some little robot says, oh, hello, how are you? You nice smile today or whatever. So um, we, we definitely want tech enthusiasts. Um, we want it to be entrepreneurial. Um, we, we get a lot of people um, like our, our ship management company, they, they do everything like for regular cruise ships. And I'm telling them we don't want a top down approach for, for the ship. Uh, we want businesses to be running, um, running the bar, the restaurants, um, the shops, everything we want, individual businesses so that we can be as as decentralized as possible. Um, that's the whole point of, of Bitcoin. And I think the more decentralized it is, the better. We don't want our company to be running the ship. We want the people on the ship to be running the ship. So that's that's the idea, more, more like a village than uh, going on a cruise. Um, but... I've been surprised by the people um, interested. I mean, old old retired ladies are calling me, <laughs> which you know they're the only ones using a telephone, so um, they're calling like, "Oh, I heard about you know your cruise ship. I I want to buy a condo." Like, okay, that's that's something we have to include too, as uh, we want health and fitness. So we've actually had a phone call from a guy who's. You know, working on what genetic, uh, some genetic technology that you know can pro- prolong your life. So, I mean, a great pay- place to be trying the, that type of stuff out. So, um, definitely all about technology and being an incubator. It's and definitely Alex, the, is yeah. the infrastructure going to be opened up to the entrepreneurs to revamp? I know that. Like the existing technology on a ship, you know, they they hold a lot, but they dump a lot as well. So people keep that in their mind and then they think, OK, so you're you're going to be, you know, harbored yeah. indefinitely. Right. So now yeah. you have to yeah. try to think about closed loop systems and things to that effect. Right. So not to stay exactly. immediately out of the gates, you might have to be some very laborious ways of transporting things from the water to the land and things like that. But eventually if entrepreneurs come onto the ships and say, Hey, I want to revamp the wastewater system. I have this great idea and that's my business model. And I want to come in, I want to, you know, prototype it here or whatever. And uh, there's there's a lot of wonderful opportunities there on that ship for all sorts of water and energy and food production and really to bring it to a a self-sustained level. So, I mean, what a, what a great, Great template, yeah, that, you know. Yeah, it's not not just the crypto, but the sustainability. I want, uh, like you said, somebody come on and say, "I've got new technology that will deal with the wastewater." Uh, 
Um, you try it on our ship. I mean, we're just a closed loop little um, setup that you can try out your technology. And uh, if it works well, uh, then you have the full market of the, the cruise industry to say, you know, we tried it on the Satoshi mm -hmm. and here's the great benefits. And, you know, ideally we want to get to the point where the water we're bringing in, um, you know, the water that goes back into the, the ocean is actually cleaner than the water we bring in. So, um, of course, early on, it's it's going to be, you know, we're going to have to have tanks and, you know, logistics of disposing things on land or whatever. Um, they already have those services here in Panama. So, um, yeah, the first steps might be a bit centralized just because uh, um, it's going to it'll be... A, taking a little while but um yeah like i said it's a, a little village and we want it to be as decentralized as possible yeah and yeah with ocean builders we're doing so much incubation the incubation that uh that's a lot of our philosophy we want to incubate new technologies we want to incubate new companies that want to help develop things that are good for the blue frontier so uh, we've been incubating them here at our uh, location and we have actually decentralized uh, that as well with COVID. Uh, everyone's kind of working from home and doing their part to make some contributions. So we're actively trying to bring in people to come and start businesses that uh, will help us uh, with all the different technology solutions that we need to have for living on the water. Yeah, we, we love that, uh, you know, all the technology that Ocean Builders is bringing to their sea pods. Um, I, I think it's awesome that there's there be this one-on-one uh, -on -one connection with with that because uh, as, you know, if you watch the podcast with, with Grant, I'm sure he went into all the really cool tech that's going to be in the, you know, the IoT and um, smart technology, smart home. You you walk into the the room and it knows you know what temperature settings you want it at or you know stuff like that. Set the set the lighting based on the time of day and all that. So any you know as they're building this awesome technology for the sea pods, anything that can apply also to the cabins on the ship, uh, that's going to be um, pretty. Pretty awesome to bring aboard yeah, and so you know happy. upgrade your your cabin. So um, yeah, I mean, yeah, you even develop bigger. like packages for people for upgrade for each cabin, right? So as all these technologies get tweaked and then they they uh, come to a final like package deal like A B C you know type things, and you can have a tech package just kind of plugged into your your unit. It'd be great. Yeah. I like yeah, it. we're we're giving people full control over ownership of their their cabin, uh, which um, that's that's why I see a, a big advance um, in ownership type of stuff because uh, you know imagine being able to buy you know one one cent worth of a cabin and trade it back and forth on the the market and like oh this cabin just upgraded with a you know, this new lighting technology. So the, the price of the whatever token for that cabin just went up and, you know, trading within seconds or anything. Uh, the work being done on the ship can be done in um, like a, a token, which you then use toward a, a cabin or upgrades or anything like that. So um, we, want, we want to do as little... Um, you know, as little uh, interference <laughs> with all that as possible. So the more the more people come up with some great ideas, I think we'll be able to, dem like, again, demonstrate to the world. Um, you, sh you prove it on the Satoshi and then take it to a little village somewhere and, you know, do the same thing. I'm going to be honest with you. I mean, I hadn't never thought of a cruise ship as sort of a pilot project for, for you know, for these kind of for creation of these new structures, as, as starting with a monetary economical structure. 
you know, this is uh, I, I talked also, to, you know, to Grant about the, the the conversations I had with Jeff Booth and Titus Gable of Free Private Cities, and really fascinating because I never thought of a ship, but it could be maybe the you know the living example of a success for of a you know of a first uh, sort of a pre private city on a cruise ship where you start off. I mean, this is would be really interesting if we just um, if it was just purely on a on a Bitcoin basis. Because then we would see, you know, how this deflationary economics with the, all the entrepreneurs, investors, technologists, inventors coming in and creating a sort of a new miniaturized world <laughs> where people, for the first time, you know, could, could make it visible to the masses of humanity. This is what life could look like on a scaled version, like in the future, um, you know, paying less and less for better, more innovative products and services. Um <laughs> zero to one technologies you know this is what really excites right. me this is why you know i'm such a huge fan of of uh, grand ramon's ocean builders uh, sea pods projects because uh i think and we you know the the reason i contacted you guys is also because we're working on this movie project or a documentary project where we want to make this like more break it down simplify the message of bitcoin what does it mean for the daily life the average Joe and Mary on the street, what could life look like? Literally, you know, uh, from day to day, uh, on every level you can imagine. Yeah, so right now there is no place in the world where you can just go and live on crypto and be surrounded by a community that understands you, that and every business uh, in the community accepts crypto and is crypto fluent. Uh, so you don't have to explain to the store owners how to accept it and it, it just, everything just works. So to be able to actually have a model where we can test all this and run it as a, um, an actual viable community that's, I mean, this is, I think this, is, I've been telling people this is, a, this is historic. This is really a massive, massive step forward uh, for, all of the uh, crypto enthusiasts in the world. And, and also it's a huge, uh, you know, there's so much innovation that happens, but I think there's so much potential here for it to really have a place for it to get grounded, even though we're gonna be in the water, but we'll be able to ground ourselves there and uh, have a real starting ground where they can grow and flourish. And uh, it's, it, it's gonna be not just one or two people randomly uh, disconnected from each other in, in each community, but now we have a whole community of 500 or 1,000 or 2,000 people. So it's it's quite a start. Yeah, I think it's going to be huge, especially uh, I just read a report today that almost $1 billion in uh, venture capital money went into crypto projects this past quarter. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I, we're hoping that the ship becomes like the hub of all Bitcoin new technology and, you know, bring your ideas and technology down, down here to Panama and get things going. So um, hopefully the, the venture capitalists uh, who are investing in these companies will, will say, okay, that's, that's where all the action is. That's where I need to, you know, we're a four hour flight from Atlanta. I think it's uh, maybe, three and a half hours from Los Angeles. So, you know, these uh, big investors, they can come down and see what see what's actually being made down here. And, you know, they might get a lot of white papers saying what business, you know, business ideas and stuff. But if they're actually down here and they see it in action, um, they'd be more likely to invest in, in your project. Right. And it's so simple. I mean, the principles, you know, of uh, 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 protecting uh, property, you know, uh, uh, property rights, uh, protecting uh, security or taking care of security, uh, health, uh, liberty. I mean, this it's actually so basic. It, this is what uh, what the government should be doing. <laughs> and and that's it, you know, and even disputes, arbitration, or if, if there's any kind of, you know, uh, uh, dispute, I think that can be even resolved by, by private contractual partners uh, through mediation, arbitration, or anything like that. Like, we could have like a private uh, society 
without government, without nation state. But I know, I mean, this is a very uh, sensitive topic to talk about uh, sometimes. Uh, um, but, you know, I'm just saying that the, the services um, that could be delivered could be, you know, delivered much more cheaper, more efficiently and better and more innovative, right? Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I will always, always caveat <laughs> that we are under pain many law. So, yeah. so the, should there be any criminal activity, we refer to the local government. <laughs> but yeah, most disputes, uh, I agree. And I, I would hope there's some sort of a online dispute resolution, you know, service with using crypto and, you know, maybe... Uh, predictive markets and stuff like that to uh, to ascertain, you know, who's lying, who's not. So there's a lot of potential out there. And Chad, how about uh, on security? I know that you've, you've had interviews with some security efforts um, previously. Are you implementing the same, like that private security companies to kind of help oversee some stuff down there? Uh, yes, definitely. So with the, um, Cruise ship management service we're using, Columbia Cruise Services, they have a minimum um, staff to, to maintain the ship and um, keep it, uh, as they call it, keep it, uh, keep its class. We're registered with the Lloyds of London. Um, so there's a certain um, level of quality that the ship has to maintain in order to keep that class with the uh, Lloyds. Um, mm -hmm. So they, they provide for us the, the crew, like the captains and the, the officer levels, and then also the engineers, the maintenance level, the electrician, um, everything, everything at that level, plus the crew to provide food for the crew. So um, will those salaries be all crypto as well? Are they, are they getting on board with the overall policy or not quite yet? <laughs> I, I asked them uh, if they could accept Bitcoin, and they said that would require uh, a meeting of the stockholders and uh, all that stuff. So, well, it, it's getting there. I think, like you said, this year, so many publicly traded companies are diversifying their portfolios with Bitcoin. I think, like, uh, was it uh, Grace Keller would have bought like four hundred fifty thousand coins just this month, right? So it's it's incredible the transition into the crypto space for even publicly held companies. So I, I think once that culture is more established, um, you'll, you'll, you'll get much more players like that. Um, exactly. That will align with the, align with the project. Yeah. Yeah. And for the security, they, they also provide the, the security services that you have on every cruise ship. Um, and there's so many cameras around the ship. I mean, I'm sorry about the, the privacy thing, but, uh, if you get in a fight, uh, you know, the security guys are going to know who started it and, you know, who's, who's at fault. So um, definitely you'll have safety on the cruise ship. And we're, we're close to Panama City. We're um, about a 30-minute um, ferry ride from the ship to Panama City. So we, we expect a lot of uh, back and forth and, um, yeah, I would hope that are demonstrating how how to pay things with Bitcoin on the ship will translate to a few shops on land wanting to get the uh, the business of people from the ship. So you know, coffee, coffee shops that are close to the marina or whatever, or the marina mm -hmm. cafe or whatever, um, they start saying, "Well, you know, we we have all these people with this Bitcoin from the ship. Let's right. let's start accepting it in the same way that we accept it on the ship." Uh, ideally, um, we're looking at like a little NFC ring that you wear on your finger that you just, uh, you can walk anywhere, you can jump in the pool with it and all that. And you just, you know, swipe the, the payment screen and uh, you're, you're paid. So let's, That'd be let's great. get all that yeah. technology going so that, um, yeah, it'll spread like a uh, Something good that spreads, not like a virus. <laughs> Spread like something <laughs> good in, into the the city and uh, all around the world. 
what about the kitchen? I I read something that there there's not going to be any any kitchen, but but mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know as a compens uh, sort of a, it's going to be a sort of a discount for for re restaurant or or right uh, uh, customers. Right. Yeah, definitely the we can't have kitchens in the cabins. Um, and you you'd asked about you know are we going to be changing the cabins for residencies? Um, ideally, you would be able to do whatever you want with your cabin, uh, including like opening up a wall and joining two cabins. Um, we have to definitely look into the viability of that, if it'll damage the structure or not. But um, we, I guess I'm, I'm all about private ownership. You own it, it's yours, but um, anything that interacts with the rest of the, the passengers or cabins, uh, we definitely have to make sure you're not harming anybody else. But, um, yeah, as far as kitchen, it's just, I mean, if, if everybody wanted to pay a huge premium in insurance rates to, to allow kitchens in the, the cabins, um, that would be the, the main factor is the insurance. And we, we are obligated to have insurance on the, the ship. So uh, just so people aren't burning down the their own cabin, which would then burn down this huge, massive, expensive ship. Uh, we we said, okay, let's let's have it so every resident who lives there they get a twenty percent discount on their their food, so that um, even I, my wife Nadia, who who loves cooking, like she's all day loving in the kitchen, but uh, she's like, well if I could just go to the restaurant and <laughs> they cook it for me, that, that clears up a lot of time for me. And <laughs> so, yeah. So well, go you enjoy could make a, I mean, you could make a communal kitchen, right? Where people that want to can go down and cook in an isolated area so they can kind of get that out of their system. Be like, Hey, I want to put a nice meal together for someone. Boom. Right. Have access and to the dining room. They don't have to do it back in their cabin. Yeah. That's yeah. not, that's safe. also a, a business yeah. model somebody might want to adapt, like open up a restaurant where you have guests, <laughs> yeah. guest cooks, and they're going to cook everybody's meal or family style or whatever. You know, it's uh, definitely yeah. not have to be um, any centralized control thing. Do you anticipate uh, more people buying to rent them for vacation? property like income property like that and if so are you implementing any kind of like assistance through like i've heard the term cb and b dropped a couple times you know so i don't know if that's a real formal effort but um that, is that going to be handled with crypto contract you know smart contract stuff and managed via that way like its own kind of application or yeah definitely we want to encourage uh and it's the same thing with the the c pods um we assume uh, you know, there's there's more people living in the U.S. or all over the world with their day job, you know, working um, to make the money that they would be able to invest, and not not as many people like that would be able to live here and be able to pay for um, like the CPAD. So that's we we've always assumed that you know buy it as a an investment. Uh, we'll help you out as much as we can to property manage the whole thing um, so that you know you might want to just come down two weeks a year and the rest of the the time you're you're making money off it so um, right the CB and B thing I think grant kind of coined that term so I think that was Joe's actually uh, okay well yeah Joe comes up with all those <laughs> yeah. crazy C based terms yeah C before yeah. space <laughs> <laughs> and is um, the ship going to be like uh like it's a sh it's a ship like it's a cruise ship i mean is it gonna like w uh, what's the plan like to travel like or or is it more like more or less like in a in a restricted zone or or it will be anchored in one location um like i said about 30 minutes uh ferry ride from from panama mm -hmm. uh right now we're looking at uh, the leeward side of a, an island right off of uh, outside of Panama City, which the island already has ferry boats going, um, I think four ferry boats a day, uh, at least for one company. There's two companies. So 
uh, several several ferry boat rides out to the island every day. So um, we will be right next to the island, so we can do quick little ferries back and forth to the island. Then you can catch the the next ferry. So or possibly we'll just have a direct one right from the ship to land. So there's still some stuff we have to work out on the actually ferry ride, but um, yeah, you'll be very close to land. So if there's any, anything you need about, uh, Oh, I want to go shopping at the mall or whatever. Um, and Panama has, it's very Westernized. It's got the, the nice malls and it's got, you know, everything you need. It's got Uber. So, you know, you can just go to town uh, jump on an Uber. It's like three dollars almost anywhere in the the city. So uh, it's very very friendly to uh, expats and uh, everybody. Yeah, I, Is it, I, you said it's twelve decks. It's uh, the ship is registered as fifteen decks, but uh, the fifteenth deck I think might be the the water side. So um, it's fourteen oh. decks in total. What I was getting at is you can zip line. If it's close enough, you can zip line from the top of it to the island. <laughs> Get there real quick. Actually, there is a zip line on the ship. Uh, it's <laughs> got a water side. It's got a, a zip line, a mountain climbing wall. So it's, it's got everything. Yeah. yeah. I heard but that. Yeah, they, I heard that Uber even now started cooperating with Volocopter. You know this this. Mandrun, sort of a, is it Lilium or Volocopter? You know, sort oh. of a dro drone right. uh, uh, vehicle. So it's exactly. not, of course, it's not scalable yet. So <laughs> I think they've just built the first prototypes and testing and doing the testing. But that would be awesome. I mean, do, do, would, the, would the ship have like a, a landing uh, platforms for whatever, helicopter or anything? Yeah, we, we're going to be putting a helicopter pad in the front of it. Uh, right now, there's just a small, uh, tiny pool for the, the crew in the front. Um, so we figured above the pool, we can put a little shaded area for the helipad and have the helicopter fly right. There's an international airport uh, in Panama City. So um, just fly into Panama City, get on the helicopter, come on out, and you're there, you know, super fast. That's great. So what would be the approximate for the average person? I mean, what would be the living expenses or I don't know, let's, or could you, is there some kind of estimates? Like what are the costs, uh, operational cost fees or, you know, expenditures, anything? Right. Um, and that's all stuff where, I mean, we just uh, won the bid a couple of weeks ago. So we're working out the, okay. the actual fees, but we'll have it all before the November 5th auction begins. Um, just remember the 5th of November, um, that's <laughs> when the auction begins. Um, but yeah, we'll have all the information. We'll have the actual uh, contract um, that you'll, you know, everybody will have for their room. So we'll have that all, all ready. Uh, the difficulty in uh, trying to figure out the fees and how much the cost of living is, you're going to be... Um, we're, we're also factoring in, we're going to be renting out the commercial space. So if we, you know, if we make the restaurant fees way too high for rent, then um, they have to pass that, the food expenses on to you. So, you know, it's, it's kind of a balancing act of how much do you want to pay in monthly fees versus, you know, what do you want your daily costs to go up? So uh, there's, there's obviously um, cost to running a, a cruise ship. So we have to keep that all factored in. All right. Very exciting. Okay, guys, I don't want to you know, take up too much of your time. Any other final thoughts or any challenges, anything we can look forward to um, in terms of ocean builders or um, the cruise ship or Josh, any final thoughts? Well, I right. guess everyone that you're signed up on our newsletter on the website, because we're going to be sending out a lot of information between now and uh, in the beginning of the auction. Uh, so we're going to be starting to publish pictures from the ship. We have our main engineer right now on the ship and he's just now starting to send us pictures and videos. So we'll start posting those. Uh, we'll 
post uh, the next dates where we'll do live call in so you can actually call us and ask questions and uh, get your questions to all your, or get answers to your, all your burning questions about the ship answered. Um, and we'll be figuring out new things as well and have more announcements to make. So make sure you're signed up and uh, yeah, keep, uh, keep it's informed. Ocean.builders slash cruise ship uh, or just oceanbuilders.com and you'll be able to find the cruise ship page as well as the, you know, if you want to purchase the sea pod. But um, the auction starts on November 5th. We'll be auctioning off 100 of the rooms um, the first couple of weeks. Um, November 5th through the no November 28th is uh, the auction. Um, we're, we're starting with just 100 rooms to kind of, because we, we really have no idea how much, a, how much a cabin should cost. So, oh, really? Um, okay. So I think if, if you get in early, um, you you probably get in a, a cheap <laughs> cheap room. Gotcha. They're, they're starting at twenty five thousand dollars. Oh yeah, that's um, what I heard. Yeah. Thirty five thousand for a uh, ocean view and mm -hmm. fifty thousand for a balcony. So uh, definitely get in early. Wow. Very exciting. We just had a lady. Uh, I received an email from her just recently on the website where she wanted to uh, actually buy a, a cabin on a uh, I guess it would be like a timeshare rental or something on a, on a cruise ship and before COVID. And that was going to cost several hundred thousand dollars. So um, I think the starting price we have for $25,000 is a little bargain. Uh, yeah. It's, it's a, it's a huge savings. I mean, there, there are at least one cruise ship where people live permanently on there and it's, it's for the, the wealthy. I mean, it's, I, I want to say that, uh, the interview I saw, she was dropping somewhere in the range of a hundred thousand a year or something on the whole experience of being able to live on mm -hmm. a cruise ship. Now, mind you, it is going to a hundred different ports a year or whatever, so they got the cost of a fuel and all that, and a, probably a significant crew, and you know, or you guys, it's a little savings there because you're not steaming around the the ocean, but um. Yeah, you guys are you're doing it right. There's there's nothing greedy in these projects, really. I mean, it's so unique to hear that these passion projects that of yours are you're like funding them yourselves and things like that. You know, um, most investors they don't want to spend their own money, so they go out and they're you know they're trying to spend everybody else's money. You guys are putting a ton of money up front. Um, there's something genuine about that for sure, and I, I appreciate that. I've been aligned with the seasteading uh, efforts for for about four five years now. And, um, that's how Chad and I met. And, um, the whole time blue, uh, I mean, ocean builders has been established. It's always been the teams putting out the technologies at cost almost, you know, and, um, always yeah, we, pushing it that it really is. I mean, the pods, the cost of the pods alone, I mean, clearly it's, you're not trying to make a killing out there. You, you really are, behind the project and in trying to make it as easy and as accessible to the general public to get out there and, and get on the water and, and get and continue to push the seasteading movement and stuff. So um, you know, I've always commended you, your team on that. Yeah. So we're we're going to make it happen. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> That's what it's all about making it happen. Now I really <laughs> love the ethos and the vision behind it. So um yeah, so thanks so much. Uh, I hope uh, I, I'm sure there's a lot of you know individuals, families that have never have a you know have never like experienced something like that, and maybe they want to like have a look and feel like what would it be like to? But I'm sure you know you've thought of that. You know whether it be pictures, videos, or interviews. Um, yeah, so it's really exciting what you guys are doing. All right, Thanks. so have a great day, and hope to talk to you soon. All right, thanks for having me. Thanks so you guys much. later. Okay. Bye -bye. Say hello to everyone down there. Bye, Josh. Bye, having... Grant. Bye, Chad. So how did you guys like this? I really enjoyed this talk. I uh, would have wished we have a little bit more time and to go into details, but I guess, you know, also some details are not known or are confidential still or in the process of being worked out. So, you know, it's not about the cruise ship uh, per se. It's more about, you know, the concept, the model behind it, whether it's scalable. Uh, and, you know, as we talked, you know, about like bringing in uh, new technologies, entrepreneurs, investors, 
um, it all, I'm also very curious about the testimonials. Once the, what kind of people are going to move in? You know, are this going to be more like families with the children, or more, you know, like retired older people, um, um, which have, you know, I guess not only more time, but maybe uh, there are a lot of people who have, you know, savings on the side or uh, enough monetary resources to buy such a cabin. I'm not sure what price is going to start. Was it going to be 10, 20, 25,000 euros or dollars upwards? But again, it's not about the cruise ship, the, the Satoshi cruise ship or the Bitcoin cruise ship, whatever we call it. It's more like about the, the concept, the vision, the idea behind it, the model, the transformational structure, which you can build on and within this within this ship. Would it be, you know, deflationary economics or bringing together uh, entrepreneurs, invent inventors, engineers, new zero to one technologies, new transportation technologies, environmental technologies, energy uh, conversion technologies, whatever technology you can think of i'm i'm very really very curious how we can unleash all these you know potentials whether it be an economical scientific technological uh, uh social level habitation level so really excited about that uh, i'm not sure whether you know uh, whether i would go on that on that kind of ship even if i had you know th that kind of money but uh, yeah, why not? I mean, um, for, you know, short vacation or anything, but I guess, you know, there's a lot of people who want to have the peace and quiet, be more on the land side or be near the water, but not on a ship, you know? So these are, it's, I guess it's a style of, of, of taste and preferences and yeah. So let me know your questions. Please subscribe to my YouTube, YouTube channel, to my podcast platforms. If you liked it, please write a five-star positive review on any podcast platform. Please subscribe, uh, pound the like button and share this video, retweet it, reshare it, whatever you do. It really supports my work uh, uh, for the long term. And um, I really love you know, doing this. So please help me, support me. I really appreciate your help, your support. Thank you for listening. And if you have any questions, DM me. My email address is hello at the totalconnector.com. Make sure you follow me on Twitter, LinkedIn, telegram facebook whatever you want and um i'll see you soon again hope you enjoyed this bye